Hey, everybody. My name is Al Nicoletti. I'm an attorney here in Florida, and welcome to the Al Nicoletti Show, where I bring on real estate super investors, rising rock stars, movers and shakers, and leaders of clubs in the community that educate, entertain, and inspire all things Florida real estate on how you can take your company to the next level. I have a very special guest on my show today. He was so hard to track down, got him booked six months ago. Zach Ginn is all over the place. This guy is a young superstar phenom. He's like everywhere. He's got an incredible YouTube channel. I went on the YouTube channel. I was like, whoa, he's everywhere. And he's constantly doing live videos. This is special for me. I don't know. I can't wait for Zach part two already. Haven't even had him come on yet. But Zach is going to talk all about wholesaling. He is big into wholesaling. He teaches investors new and seasoned on wholesaling. He's got his whole channel out there, so he's got tons of tips and tricks. We'll talk about some of those today. He also wanted to talk about vision. I can't wait to hear about that. It's probably about having focus and vision on doing things in real estate and why you can't just set goals. You have to have the vision. And we're going to talk about his YouTube channel. And of course, I can't get off the Al Nicoletti show without talking about probate. And I know, because we didn't even talk about this, Zach, before the show, I know Zach knows probate and the probate niche, and it's a super hot niche in Florida. So without further ado, it's Zach Ginn. Zach, thanks so much for joining us, joining me on the show. I, I, I'm, I'm so excited to hear what you have to say. I'm going to let you let it rip. Dude, thank you so much, Al, for bringing me on. I know it took six months to get it going, but I, I had a way to really delegate my entire wholesaling business uh, before I was able to have the time uh, to come here on like an 11 o'clock on like a Wednesday to be able to do this. So um, I have the time now. I'm ready to give as much value as I possibly can. And uh, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, I'm pretty excited for this one. Yeah, I'm always excited when I see you on the lives. You're always doing something with prop stream or you're doing like a, a live dial in, like practicing with new investors and coaching them on different things. So we can talk a little bit about that. But Zach, you're 21, superstar investor. You're in Florida. You got your YouTube channel. You have, uh, what is it? Like and on your channel, it was 1,000. One uh, subscribers over almost 2000 subscribers. Um, so tell us like, how did you all start with this? Like, when did you start? I think, uh, you were a, a bag boy at one point. Now you're a super investor. You're doing all of this online. Tell us about the Zach Ginn story. Yeah. So really quick, my name is Zach Ginn. Um, I'm a real estate wholesaler out of Port St. Lucie, Florida. And really uh, I started wholesaling at the age of 17. So quick background story, uh, basically from the age of 14, uh, w whenever I was in high school, I was actually uh, really into high school wrestling. That was what I really liked to do. And that was my sport of choice. I did that cross country. I did all the sports possible. But um, overall, at 14, uh, that's what I had. I had girlfriends. I had all the fun stuff. And I realized if I wanted a car, all that great stuff, I need money. And I didn't get into wholesaling at 14. I actually started a, as a bag boy job. The only person that hired me at the age of 14. Uh, if you're in Florida, you know, it's the green supermarket. That's all I can say. Uh, I don't want to get sued. But I uh, worked there for about four years of my life, and it was absolutely insane. Actually, three and a half years, but uh, started being a bag boy. I was working a lot and minimum wage back then. I think it was seven something an hour. And really, that's what I was doing. I was bagging groceries. I was making enough money where I could do all the fun stuff I wanted. Went to my high school wrestling tournaments. I was living the life. Uh, basically, at the age of 17, I, I was getting really sick of working that job. Uh, I was not getting promoted. The managers didn't like me. And they didn't really want to give me any raises. And it's hard not to get a raise uh, as a bag boy. So uh, I was just not being treated well there. Uh, they didn't really value what I had. And they didn't like, they, they were just hiring other people. And it's all political there. So uh, it's funny to say that as a bag boy, but I knew I was worth something more. And uh, one day I came home uh, from a bag boy job at, at like, 1 a.m. because they were working me night shifts and stuff like that to clean. I was scrubbing toilets. It was, I hated it. But um, I saw something on my dad's desk. It was a $20,000 check from a wholesale. It said wholesale. Uh, it didn't say, it said assignment fee on it uh, from the title company that we still use today. And it, it blew my mind. And I went to my dad uh, the next day and asked, Hey, how can I do this? Like, how can I make a 20? How do you make $20,000 checks like this? This is unbelievable. And he said, oh, I, I do wholesaling real estate. And I'm like, can you explain it to me? He explained it a little I, I, in one ear, out the other. I had no idea what he was saying. And um, basically looked it up and I was like, dad, can you teach me how to do this? Uh, at the time, it was a pretty big wholesale in the area in Port St. Lucie. And he said, no, uh, he didn't really want me in the business. And he thought if I wanted it bad enough, I'd just do it myself. Uh, wholesaling is very tough in Florida. A lot of rough, a lot of rough things in Florida. 
Um, we, we can talk about later, but uh, wholesaling is not for the faint of heart, especially in the state. It, it's super saturated. It's a lot of crazy people, and there's more crackheads than I'm comfortable with in Port St. Lucie. So uh, probably not the best thing for a 17-year-old to get into. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, outside my dad's wishes and probably my mom's wishes, I started wholesaling. I, I literally read all the information I could, and I realized – Pretty quickly, I had no money. I had about 300 bucks in my bank account, and I was spending that all in my car, uh, all on the other fun stuff. So I realized I didn't have much money. So what can I do? And every book I picked up, there's some books on my dad's shelf, all from 2002, 2003. That was the knowledge I was getting in 2017. On YouTube, there was no big YouTubers out there really sharing how to do wholesaling for free. You had to do a $6,000 course or seminar or go to a boot camp uh, to learn how to do wholesaling. So um, the, the knowledge was behind a paywall for me. So it was all in these 2002 old books. So uh, Fortune Builders had some stuff, but I didn't do any of that. So um, overall, I, I knew all I could do is bandit signs. So that, that's all I thought. So I uh, went to this local sign shop, bought 150 signs, I think for two bucks a pop, basically spent all my money. And outside my high school wrestling tournaments in 2017, I started sticking them outside. Luckily for me, outside these high school wrestling tournaments, uh, they were by busy stop signs and really, really busy red lights that I had no idea were primed for bandit signs. Started sticking them everywhere I could. Uh, so basically an hour for my tournament and an hour after. I was always tired after them, but um, stuck them out and did 150 signs and went back to school. Uh, so so the wrestling tournaments would be like a Saturday. So that Monday I had class. Um, quick story. Uh, since this is Florida, I, I did dual enrollment. So some people in Florida might know about that. So I was basically a full-time college student since I was like 16. Uh, so I was taking college classes uh, at the local state college. And uh, from there, you have a little more leeway. But I was there in class, and I got my first bandit sign call. And I got kicked out of class for actually answering that call. And uh, unfortunately, it was not a good deal. But I knew that, okay, this marketing is working. So go the next day. I get another call. I get kicked out of class again, which is probably not good for my academics. But that call, I had someone ask me, hey, my name is John. I'm looking to sell my house. I'm looking to move out of state. Lost my job, but there's a job I got lined up out of state. I literally go out to meet him, and I get a contract, and I make about $20,000, $25,000 on that wholesale deal at 17 years old. Obviously, you're a lawyer, so you know in Florida I couldn't sign that at 17. My dad actually had to, had to go with me, and he signed on my behalf, and Luckily, he gave me the money uh, when the check cleared. Uh, right. But turned 18, uh, basically by the time I graduated high school, made about $100,000 and uh, scaled it from there. The only other guy I knew in high school that made $100,000, he was selling doors. I don't think he was doing any of the real estate stuff. So you're making you're making go even in uh, out of high school. So Zach, you know, you're young enough to go back a couple of years. If you had to do it any differently, what would you do differently to start? Or would you would you... Tell people like, look, this is the book I read. This is what I did. Follow my method. Follow the channel because this is the stuff I did to start. Like, would you do anything different? Um, I would probably have gotten worse grades and spent more time wholesaling. Um, <laughs> that's one thing I probably would have done my first year because uh, I was still a straight A student when I was doing that stuff. So I would have stopped that. Probably would have qu quit wrestling just to do more bandit signs because uh, that would have been an extra 100K easily. Uh, and that's probably what I've done. I would have changed it a lot because it was a lot of grind. It took me to get to the point where I'm at now. Uh, so I wouldn't really change much. It, it was a great learning experience. And I really had to put in that grind to get where I was at now. So tell us about this vision thing that you wanted to talk about. Like, I mean, you're, you're at the point you're at right now. You're making all the videos. You're constantly on the channels. You're posting, what, four videos a week, live videos. Seven doing this stuff. Like, tell us about what your, what's this whole vision? Like, how can you help investors either new or seasoned keep growing their business and what you're doing? Yeah. So here's my vision. So I have two YouTube channels. I flip with Rick, which basically me and Rick partnered up on that's coming up at almost like 10,000 subscribers, which is mind blowing uh, to me. Cause it was like 500 last year, um, 2000 for the Zach in one. So um, a lot of people are really trusting me uh, to learn wholesaling. So uh, really quickly on my story, when I started out, I created this YouTube channel selfishly for myself. I wanted to make videos that if my 17-year-old self was watching, because I had no knowledge, I had old books, I didn't have five grand to spend on coaching. I wanted to make a YouTube channel basically to teach myself back in time. Let's say I get a time machine. 
Um, what would the perfect YouTube channel be if I was 17 to soak, soak up as much free knowledge as possible? So that's what I've been doing. And a lot of people have been really liking it. So uh, my vision for the channel and what I do is I want to help everyone get to $100,000 per year in real estate wholesaling absolutely for free. I don't think there should be any paywall. This information should be free. You should not pay to learn wholesaling. I, it, it took me so long to get to the level where I was at now. And I just want to give the information out for free. I truly believe the more you give, the more you receive. Um, so selflessly for me, I want to give as much as possible. I literally do free masterminds. I give away free courses. Um, everything I have in my brain, I give out for free. I got people in my own market. I'll give you everything for free. I don't care. I'm just trying to help as many people as possible because this wholesaling industry has blessed me so much that I need to bless the whole industry out. And I've just seen people spend $5,000 on a coaching course and lose all their money and they had no marketing money and they quit wholesaling. And it breaks my heart because I truly believe today, especially in the state of Florida, the greatest opportunity right now to become a millionaire in under two years with no money, no Bitcoin, no Forex trade, it's, it's wholesaling real estate. That is the quickest way to become a millionaire in under two years. At any age, race, gender, and ethnicity, you don't have to be a citizen of the United States. That is the quickest way to do it. And I feel like that information should be free because I know I can change lives. Um, that is my goal. I think life is too short not to go reach your dreams and your goals. And um, it's something I'm really looking forward to. And it's something outside of making money um, that, that really motivates me and it really fulfills me. So that is my vision. I, I'm super excited for it. I've helped so many people uh, make 100,000 already. Uh, I, I've had single moms that have come up to me and out in DMs and stuff and said I've helped them change their lives and really put food on the table for their families. And it just, it pumps me up and I did it all for free. So uh, put a smile on my face. So you have, you have a course and you have masterminds. Where can people yeah. find these masterminds and courses like for uh, Yeah, it's actually, I actually run the largest wholesaling mastermind in the country, believe it or not. Um, it's called Wholesaling Houses Free on Facebook. It's also the fastest growing Facebook group for wholesaling also, which is pretty cool. Um, and I, I verified, I checked it. Um, so <laughs> Wholesaling Houses for Real on Facebook. That's my Facebook group. Um, I do a live coaching call every Thursday in there. You can go on there, literally talk to me face to face, kind of like this. I'll do it for free. I don't care. Um, and then my course is in there too. It's absolutely for free. All my scripts, like everything you want, it's there. So Zach, you're, you're big into wholesaling and there's so many different niches in wholesaling that people can go after. What do you think are like the top three that new or seasoned investors can really keep going into with wholesaling? Like it, I mean, it could be probate. It could be all the tax delinquents. I know you talk about it with all your, the, the prop stream videos that you can go after fire damage. You can go after nuisance lien or uh, the water being cut off. But like, what are those niches that that if you're, where do you see it being hot right now, right? Like you're in a great market in that Port St. Lucie, that Brevard County area. That's a great market. It's not Miami. It's not highly saturated, but you, you still have a lot of growth. Where do you see it blossoming? Yes. Believe it or not, Port St. Lucie is extremely saturated. Um, the population is only 200,000 and everyone from Palm Beach and Miami comes up here. So it's very saturated. Everyone from Orlando comes over um, to our market too. So I'm, um, Every deal we get, they get at least six to seven postcards a week and about three to four cold calls a week. So it's very saturated. The problem is it's a great market, but it's very tiny. So um, we have to get very niched out with our stuff. So I'll tell you my top three. Number three, again, is going to be water shutoffs. I, it's just been really good for us lately. Don't get it from PropStream. Get it straight from the utility department. The harder it is to get this information, the better. Uh, number two is code violations. I just... I just love code violations. I, it, it works so well. It, it is saturated, but that's a list that if you just pull all of it and just cold call that list enough, you'll get deals and it's free. Um, and obviously number one's gotta be probate, like hands down. Like I just, I've never, I cannot say enough how much I love probates in Florida. So again, Florida is God's waiting room. So there's the most probates everywhere. And I'm not saying that to be cruel, but that's the truth. There's a lot of old people in Florida. So there's a lot of probates. And a lot of these sellers live out of state um, that actually get inherited the property because everyone, you know, they get older, they get some money, they move to Florida. The kids are out of state. They don't want to deal with out of state stuff. They just want to get rid of the property. And the house is a mess from like a hurricane. Oh, the, the best deals always are probates. 
So I don't know if you know it, Zach. I do a lot of probate. Yeah, as an attorney. yeah I do tons of probate. Like uh, if, if there's a bread and butter, it's probate. So like I had Carrie Like on my show and that seemed to be a really popular episode tackling on the floor to probate niche because it talked about strategies and marketing and different tips and tricks. This is going to be interesting to you because if you if you love that niche and you're passionate about talking about it, what are some ways and tips and tricks to getting more involved in probate for wholesalers? A lot of people ask me, and I have a different take on it just because it's like, I don't, I'm not the investor, right? I'm the lawyer. But like for you, you see it from, here's our marketing strategy. Here's our postcards. Here's what we're trying to tap into. Like, what are those lead lists? Like, the, I mean, for probate especially. Yeah. So the... The harder it is to get the probate, always the better lead because there's less investors trying to do it. So in Port St. Lucie, it's very hard. A lot of counties I do probates in, it's extremely hard to get this list. You have to pull the list. You actually have to get it from the clerk of the court site or get it emailed to you. And then you just have a decedent. And maybe you get a, then you get the PRs on there. Uh, sometimes in some crazy counties, you don't even get the PRs out of, outside of Florida that we do some probates in. But you get the PR. And then you got to do go cross-reference the data. It's very, very strenuous, especially when we have thousands and thousands of probate leads. So obviously, I'm worth a lot of money per hour me working. And it's not worth my time to go spend 40 hours to scrub at a list of 1,000. It's not worth it. So I have a VA. So that's why I, I leverage time. So a VA for four or five bucks an hour from India or the Philippines, they'll do a lot of that work. Um, we have them trained. We have modules and stuff from there. We can train them. And they do a lot of that work for us. So it's a big advantage I have over most of my competition where I can niche out and literally work super hard trying to find these probate phone numbers, mail to addresses, and go really hard in the paint when it comes to these probates. Um, I'm in Florida. I'm competing not with wholesalers on probates, really. It's realtors. Realtors will buy a huge bulk probate list and start mailing it like crazy and going like nuts on it. The cool part about that is realtors are generally lazy with their marketing. Going to be honest, they'll do Zillow or they'll buy a probate list and mail it. And those probate data, as you know, when you're buying it from a service, they do a bulk pull usually once a month. And the advantage I have is right when the probate's filed, literally the next day we're starting to text or call them. So um, we have that speed advantage where we'll get the deal over most wholesalers and other people. Because I got VAs working around the clock, getting the data ready, getting the mail out. So that's a big advantage I have. Um, speed is everything for probates. And we're always the first person. And it's a little rough. Um, if someone just passed away, we're always the first call. Uh, one tip I can give you is don't be like, hey, Al, so, hey, I saw you know your aunt died. I'm here to buy your house. That ain't going to go too well. You need a call and just be a friend there and just ask if they're looking just to sell the property. Um, and just see if you want to have a conversation from a, I, I know emotion is going to be very, very hard and sore, and very rough uh, in the beginning, uh, but you just need to be that friend there and really help them out in the process. Most people, if a significant other or something passed away, they're not looking to sell the property the next day. Um, it takes building that actual relationship and helping them out, um, especially the whole process to get things done. Um, we have probates now that, I mean, it's been nine months and we're still talking to these people and they're not ready to sell yet. Uh, but we're, we're here to help them out. Uh, but that's the number one thing. And then the number two thing is having empathy. I don't think a lot of wholesalers, when they deal with probate, have enough empathy. There's a difference between empathy and sympathy. Sympathy is just being like, oh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry your aunt died, Al. Like, whatever, I, like, sign the contract. That's sympathy. You don't actually care. You're just trying to be nice. Empathy is when you're crying with the lady that, you know, their aunt or uncle died. Um, that's like legitimately caring about them and their family situation is super important. And people pick up on that. Um, it's naturally good to be an empathetic and nice person to get deals. But if you want probate deals, your acquisitions person has to be empathetic, not sympathetic. Very, that's a golden nugget for people out there that are listening. So Zach, Zach's got the method. Zach, could you do like a live uh, uh, impersonation or call? Like, like, how would you handle that call? Like you're calling that person going off after that list. I know you do it on your, on your channels and stuff, but like, what would that sound like? What does that look like? Yeah, dude, I am. I'm like, I did, I do two hour live cold calls. Not every, uh, maybe once a month I, I try because gurus or and coaches don't do it. They're, they're scared to do it because they're scared to not look perfect. I do it because when I cold call, I, I'm not a slick salesman. I'm not like Grant Cardone on the phones. I'm as 
in um, as personal and just down to earth as possible because that's just my personality. I don't have the Rolex or the or, or the, the the Gucci. Like I'm I'm as just down to earth. I try to keep my ego out of everything I do. I love running a really nice profitable business, but I just try to connect with people and just be as nice and humble as possible. So when I'm call, calling, I'm not the slick salesperson. So if I did a call with you, you were a probate. Let's say you know your aunt died, unfortunately. Um, obviously I'm following TCPA compliance and all the laws and everything. Don't sue me government, but, um, I would probably just call, say, Hey, ring, 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 ring. Hello. You say, Hey, this is out. Hey, Hey, Al, is, are you the owner there at one, two, three main street? And you're going to think for a second, cause this is a probate. You're going to be like, cause, cause you're usually getting a call from a realtor saying, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that, you know, your aunt died. I'm here to list your property. Like it just, it sounds like you're just, you just, it's transactional. I hate that stuff. And I'm going to ask you for the owner of that house, you know, your aunt's house. And you're going to say, well, you're going to get stumped a little because you're like, are you the owner or are you not? And then you're like, well, maybe, well, I'm just looking for the owner. I'm looking to buy that property. And that's all you're doing. You're not, you're not diving deep like a re realtor or other wholesaler. I know you're looking to sell the property because of whatever died. You're just being inquisitive. And then from there, I'm not being aggressive. You cannot be super aggressive to probates. If you know they're ready to talk and they're open to having a conversation about that their aunt died or not, and they want to sell it, then hey, do it. If they're not comfortable with it, they say, well, I was possibly thinking about selling it, but today's not the right time. Perfect. When's the next time I can give you a call, Al? Be as personal as possible. Have a great day. You just being that nice person is so much better than just, just going bang, 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 bang. Um, and that's how we get a lot of our probate deals. I mean, our average probate deal is pushing 50K right now. Um, it's a whole, they're whole tales now, mostly for probates, but they are super profitable. So that's why we spend a lot of time pulling the list and getting our cold calling perfectly right on there. But it's a lot different than a regular cold call, but that's what I would do. It's not special. It's not sexy. It's, it's, that's what it is. I know there was an investor here that found a deal in, in Nassau. That was like Fernandina. I think the payoff of the mortgage was like 110. I think they offered like 115, but then they found out retail value was close to 200. I think they kept it for like an Airbnb, but like it just goes to your point, Zach, that you can find these probate deals and there could be just gigantic spreads, whether you're doing the wholesaling or the wholesaling, which is a whole different concept that you like doing as well. It's, ve it's very interesting. Also, you brought up a great point before when it comes to talking to the heirs or talking to the owners, it's not getting too in depth. I got a call like last week from this investor and I was, I was asking questions about like, are, are there creditors? Like who's around? What's around? And they wanted to know like all the details. And I was like, you don't have to know all that stuff because then you close them off. Then they're not interested. I mean, when you're starting to talk about even nine months on that probate that you're talking about, I think that's insane for timing unless it's like highly litigated. But some of the investors want to know all of like the details and this. And I just, I'm like, it's better to just say, Hey, I understand what you're going through. This is, I know you have a property. So I liked what you said about keeping it simple with the verbiage for the call. Kiss, dude. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> that's and that's what I, yeah. Are you, so you're also big on a VAs. I know you've mentioned that several times. Like, do you just, you just hire out to have those people do all the calls and the cold calling for you? Yeah. I mean, you have two things as a wholesaler that are very finite money and time. So we have a lot of money, but we don't have a lot of time. Actually, I have a lot of time. I just don't like working a lot. Um, so I'll, I'll do five to six hours a week of wholesaling work. That's the most I'll do now. Uh, took me six months to get that level. Um, that's why I needed some time to get there. But I basically delegated the whole business. Um, so if I did this all myself, I'd be working 120 hours a week and I would go insane doing it. So I can leverage my time and with money. So for four or five bucks an hour, I have VAs doing the calling for me. I have VAs pulling the list for me. I have VA marketing managers. I have acquisitions managers. I got agents for dispositions. It's just a functioning machine. And it's a cool machine because you put a dollar in and you get $5 out. And it's just, it's arbitrage right there. Like if you had a machine where you put a dollar in and get five bucks out, you'd just be jamming that thing with quarters and dollars, whatever you can. Um, so that's what we do. And uh, I really enjoy it. And I don't have to work that hard for it. So uh, it, it, it's really fun. It, it is a lot of work. It took me a lot of work to get to the point where it's at now. But um, I utilize VAs for tasks that are just not worth my time. And uh, my time is best spent thinking about big picture stuff, um, trying to get stuff that will tweak to make an extra $100,000, $200,000 a year in profit. 
uh, that really changed change it and really had to change people's lives. And are you using them more now than ever? Like you're just oh, yeah. the amount of labor in the United States. Oh yeah. So are you doing more cold calling if for your marketing or like, what do you find are the most effective marketing strategies, whether it is direct mail or it's the cold calling? Cause I know you've talked about the whole, the text blasting thing. Like there's that new law and everything. You can't really do it as much or do it at all, but where do you find your marketing is most effective? Yeah. So number one's direct mail. It ain't going to change. Direct mail has just been our best. And it's honestly, it's very easy. If that makes sense. We get the calls, the acquisitions manager and answers it, puts it in podio, goes in the appointment and goes from there. Um, our best deals are always from direct mail. Uh, you just go on my vlog. I, I do a vlog twice a week or no, twice a month. And I, again, I have HUDs on there where I'll show the buy and sell side and I'll literally show you the amount of money I put in the property. And I'll literally say, this is direct mail I got. This is what we bought it for. This is what we sold it for. And this is what the acquisitions process looked like. That's it. Uh, direct mail, we do a lot, but it's our number one right now. Uh, I would say cold calling is number two still. And then three is cold calling right now. Um, SM, at SMS number two. I, they have a new trace act. I think a lot of influencers in wholesaling is kind of... They're making it a lot scarier. So you would go buy maybe their cold calling course or the radio ad course or the direct mail course. Um, They're they're using fear. Uh, You probably know sales pretty well. Fear is a really good driver to get people to just buy anything. Um, Look at a hurricane. Um, It it ramp up sales because of fear. Um, You're not going to get water, gas. So it's a little bit of that. But um, yeah, I mean, they're going to restrict SMS a little, but there's always ways to go around it. So uh, we're working on some loopholes right now, but... Uh, direct mail is still our number one, and that includes probate mailers, which still are number one. So uh, direct mail right now, we're just putting offers on postcards, and we're going from there, and we're just going crazy. But uh, yeah, we, we do really well with it. That's great. Yeah, I mean, tons of tons of tips and tricks for people that want to do more of the investing on the wholesaling side. Uh, Zach, before we dive in, into your YouTube channel, do you have any other tips and tricks for people that are trying to get in wholesaling that can that can get more leads or um, get more into it? Of course, they can go to your mastermind and the course, which is that would be great content in itself. But any tips and tricks for the video today that would help people? Yeah. So if you're looking at wholesaling and you haven't got your first deal or you're trying to get your your first deal done, I would say, especially in Florida, since this is going to be Florida specific, get behind your car and just start drawing for dollars. That is like, do not complicate this wholesaling business. It can be as simple and and as complicated as possible. If you and me get in the nitty gritty about probates, uh, it's going to, whoever's new into wholesaling is just going to get very confused. Seems like this is very like complicated, very stressful. I don't want to deal with it. Guys, wholesaling is as simple as going in a car, driving around, finding a, a probably a beat up property, finding that address, go to the property appraiser, find the owner, go to truepeoplesearch.com, call the owner, see if they're looking to sell a property, meet them, sign a contract that's free. Go to flipwithrick.com slash contract, literally sign the contract, find a cash buyer, sell it to them, make a profit. It's just simple as that. So get behind your car, get some drying for dollars. Go cold call and get a deal. Um, I just think so many people complicate wholesaling. And really, if you want to get your first deal or your first 100K, you don't need employees. You don't need this crazy mastermind. You don't don't need to buy a course. Just go out there and talk to sellers. Start marketing. If you have no money, do free marketing. That's it. Probates are free. You can cold call probates absolutely for free. And I spent a fortune doing it, but you can do it all for free. If you took all my money, I would literally just be cold calling probates all day. That's all I would do and driving for dollars. So... All I, guys, you got to make this business simple. Don't be a master cold caller. Literally just use a simple script. Ask people if they're looking to sell a property. That's as simple as this business should be. And you get better and better. You can start scaling it up, delegating it. But it's, it's just as simple as talking to sellers and getting contracts signed. Just do it, right? Just getting out there. Like instead of asking the questions, go out there and make the action happen. That's it. So Zach, you also, you believe what I talk about with the silver tsunami that a lot of people are, that the uh, state of Florida is just going to keep increasing with all the probates. I love how much you're talking about probate, but you, you believe that that's the trajectory as well, right? It's just going to keep going more and more. I mean, if you would sit there all day and do probates, I mean, that's saying a lot because you do a lot of this on a daily basis. So you see all the deals. Well, it's not silver. It's more gray now, if you know what I mean. So that means 
So many middle-aged people are coming to Florida now. So the reason why I do a lot of wholetailing now too is where I'm buying the deal and just putting on the market is because there's rich New Yorkers that are coming by, not even looking at the property. Just a realtor comes by and they'll pay over ask for it. I had a deal right now. We listed it for $210,000. Um, I can't wait to release the vlog on it. It's listed for two hundred ten. We're selling it for two hundred twenty five from a family in California that never saw the house, all cash, sight unseen. So sight unseen. So it's not silver. It's kind of gray. Um, people are just swarming in, and for a lot of people, like in Miami or something, like two hundred twenty five thousand. It's a three bedroom, two bath, like fifteen hundred square feet. People are like, what? Port St. Louis is pretty cheap. People are affordable housing in Florida. People are eating up like candy. They're sick of the taxes. I don't care what political climate you guys are in. I'm just, Florida's got no taxes and people are flocking to it. So a lot of the older people are coming, but their families are coming too, which means it's the, the prices are getting very strained right now. Uh, but to sell the deal right now is so easy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, in general, like even if the economy is bad, old people who have got social security pensions, they're still going to come down here. So um, Florida will have a very steady stream of older people probably for the rest of my life, unless they change the tax code where there's no state income tax. But I know they passed something where you need a two thirds majority in uh, the Florida state uh, legislature to even get that done. So it, it won't happen. So uh, there's going to be old people in Florida probably for the rest of my life. And Zach will just keep calling the probates. He's going to be on the phone getting those probate deals. That's it. That's it, Zach. So I'm looking at your YouTube channel. There's two of them, right? Flip with Rick, and then you got the Zach Inn channel. Tell us about the channels that people can get more involved and go watch. I mean, you have great views. I mean, on some, you have 1,000 views. On Flip with Rick, it's like 9,500 subscribers. Tell us about the channels. You got Exposing Wholesaling Gurus, Wholesaling State of the Union, Becoming a Wholesaling Expert. I love the graphics and the thumbnails that you're doing. I w tell us more about it. Yeah, so... I just try to give what a $10,000 mastermind looks like. I have been inside of every single one. People have given me access to them. And I literally take that information and just put it on my YouTube channel for free. That's what I do. That's all I do. Um, I run a seven-figure wholesaling operation net. And I give every, every ounce of knowledge I have, I give out for free. And I don't care. I'm not in a scarcity mindset. I think this information should be free. Like, it's just, that's what I do. Um, some of my top videos, I, I would tell you that trying to help you guys out is, um, I have done some, I think the most value you guys went to the flip with Rick channel is I have a podio setup guide. Um, a lot of people charge about five, 600 bucks to give you a podio. I should have to do that for free. I'm gonna give you my top five prop stream lists. I share a lot of stuff, but I, I think the biggest value possible out there would probably be the, the those mastermind calls I do because you just get in front of me and you can ask me any question you want and I'll answer it. Like straight up, uh, no, no, uh, no sugar on there. No honey. Like I'll give you straight facts. I had a family go call me once and they're like, I'm in LA. How do I wholesale here? I'm like, you can't, you can, but you need to go virtual. Um, I gave my top 10 virtual wholesaling markets. A lot of people got mad at me from there. Cause I exposed probably three virtual wholesaling markets. Nobody was using that was just prime for the picking and uh, people went nuts in there. Um, it, it was really fun, but, um, I give just as much free value as I can. And I, I just try to give, um, the value that I wish I had when I was 17, which the info I had there, but, um, those YouTube channels, I do a video day on each one. Zach and one's a little different. Um, that is more of me, uh, some personal stuff, some finance stuff. I'm really big in financial freedom, independence. Um, I, I literally like, I don't get off topic, but every, I, I, I don't like saying I live poor, but I, I got my expenses and then I literally invest everything I can into everything, real estate, stocks, everything. Um, so I'm really big into that and just financial freedom forever. If wholesaling ends tomorrow or they, let's say they ban real estate, I'm good for the rest of my life. So um, that's important. Flip with Rick's more of me and Rick together on there. You got exclusive Zach and content on the Zach and channel, exclusive Rick and channel uh, content on that one, but subscribe to both. And I'm here to give you as much value as possible. Yeah, I think I saw there was a video that you're doing today at 5 p.m. with what was it, the two cents? Yeah, about Ed, Edward Hayes, the wholesale coach. He's a another big uh, wholesaling YouTube uh, guy, but I was actually on the phone with him. I was congratulating him. He had a, a kid a couple months ago. So I was just um, congratulating him on that. And uh, he was telling me he got two virtual wholesaling deals for under two cents 
each. And I was like, I, I need to, I need to learn how to do that. So um, <laughs> yeah. I do interviews like that all the time. I, it's, it's really like Al, you probably know this. Um, this is just for you, not for the audience, but you know, who's getting the most value, not the audience, you, cause you're personally like interviewing me. Um, you ask what you would want to know about me and you gain the knowledge th like that you just possibly can't. Um, so I get more knowledge interviewing people than my audience does. And it's a little selfish, but I learn a lot and I know you probably learning a lot interviewing all these other people. And it's honestly, it, it's a great win-win. So something I do want to learn that you talked about before, you mentioned that there were three markets that you told wholesalers about that were really hot markets. And all of a sudden, like everybody started going to them. What were those yeah. three? And what were those three? And do you find any other markets in Florida that are, that are really untapped where wholesaling could be fruitful? Yeah. So I know one was Greenville, South Carolina. Um, other one was Knoxville, Tennessee. And... Mm. I think I talked about it, but I don't think I talked about it too. It was Fresno, California too, which not a lot of people knew about. So those were the top three. I can tell you right now. I got, I know people all in there that literally, I'm not going to be mean. I'm just gonna be honest. I looked at those markets and I knew three 20 year old kids that literally know nothing about wholesaling. They're just racking just so much money virtually wholesaling there that they literally, they're, they're terrible talking to sellers, but there's racking in money. I'm like, if someone who actually like watched my stuff actually knew what they're doing, they do great. So those are great markets to do. Um, what was your other question? Florida. Like where do you oh, see yeah. an untapped market in Florida? Because Port St. Lucie, right. to, to me, I see, I see Port St. Lucie and I'm like, oh, that could be a great market because Miami's already saturated, right? And then Jacksonville is just blossoming and growing. Where's the next market? Small county? So you need to go small. So there's two, I'd say. Um, you got Orlando. Go north. Don't go to Kissimmee. Um, go to like Lando Lakes, Sanford, those like mom and pop suburbs outside of Orlando or prime for the picking under $200,000. Um, go up to Tampa. Tampa's terrible. You go East out there, you know, kind of that plant city area, but a little nicer, um, go North up to Pasco County. I think, um, a lot more rural, but a little more suburban. Don't go straight country, like don't go to Okeechobee, but um, go a little where it's like suburban, there's nicer houses, but like just kind of still untapped, not sprawling metro, met, metro out there. But um, those would be the best ones, I would say. Like I've had guys try to go out to like Palatka, where it's like the middle of nowhere, and or like Yulee, Florida. Like that, those are tough. Um, you need the right balance where the, the reason why I like that so much is like if I do Pasco County. My Tampa cash buyers will, will buy there. If I go out to Yuli, I don't have any buyers out there. So the metro people that are, there's a lot of cash buyers in metro areas, they'll still buy those rural places that are kind of still in the outskirts for like a rental or something. So that's where I would say uh, Miami's tough, but um, they all work. I, again, I just did another crazy deal in uh, Palm Beach, actually a subject, no, lease option in uh, Delray Beach. And we're doing Airbnb on that. Like, there's so much saturation in Delray, but we're still doing deals there. So don't don't think your your market's just tapped out. Like I'm still doing deals there. Again, it was a probate. Again, we did a really good relationship with the person, but still, we worked hard enough. We still got that deal. And lease options are ugh, they're amazing. So uh, that's what I would say right now. I'll, I, the outskirts of Orlando and Tampa are prime right now. Outskirts of Miami is like Palm Palm Beach, which is still tough. So um, that's what I would say. What do you like about the lease options that, that you love so much? Dude, it's three paydays, man. You get paid in the beginning, middle, and end. How can you not like that? And it's literally no money out of pocket. You get cash flow. It's uh, it's the best. And there's how, no risk. How are you getting paid in the beginning? Like, explain that a little bit. Like, because yeah. I don't know anything about that. Like, I could tell okay. you about probate all day, but I don't know do you anything know about that. Twos? What's that? Do you know a little bit about sub twos? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So, I always say this. So you probably know this as a lawyer. If you if you're 18 year old and you just mess up a subject two, you could probably go to jail, right? If you yeah. mess up a someone's subject two, you take someone's mortgage and let's say you just fraudulent intent, you did not pay the mortgage. It'd be bad. You could probably get in trouble as an 18 year old just being stupid. If I mess up a lease option, I'm probably not going to jail. So when you want to learn about lease options or creative finance, do the thing that's not going to get you in like legal risk. Obviously I do subject twos, but I got 
a lot of lawyers. I'll make sure my butt is protected. A lease option is basically what it is. So you get someone who wants to take payments on a property. So you give them a down payment. You give them payments for, let's say, three, four, five years. You balloon at the end of the five years. And then you do an interest percentage on there. And then at the end, you agree to buy the price at a strike price. So let's say I agree to buy this property for $100,000. I'm going to give you $5,000 down. I'm going to pay you, let's do an amortization at 3% or whatever. And then from there, I don't have my calculator on me. And at the end, we'll pay you about $100,000. Uh, probably a little, if you're good at negotiating, you can do principal in there too. Uh, so maybe it's like 95 uh, after five years. And then from there, at 95000 So now I have, a le- I have a lease with an option to buy. $5,000 down. I pay, I, I pay like basically a mortgage payment. And at the end of that, I'll pay you the 95,000. Now that's great. I can literally just rent that out and make a lot of money, but it's five years. It's not indefinite like a subject too. So what I would do is get a, run probably a Facebook ad, do a rent to own right now. There's a lot of people from the pandemic that literally just can't qualify for a mortgage. They're entrepreneurs. Um, so they will literally give me $10,000. Again, I have to do my underwriting here. I have to make sure it's all good. I have to show that, you know, I actually underwrit the person as well as I could. They'll give me $10,000. They will pay me an arbitrage on top of the payment. So if I'm giving a mortgage, if I'm getting a mortgage payment for the top one, I'll probably get rent payments uh, from the tenant buyer. So if it's 700 bucks a month for the lease option, I'll probably get 1100 or a thousand bucks a month and I'll make 300 bucks there. So in the beginning, I'm making five grand in profit. I'm making 300 bucks a month. At the end there, I'll tell my tenant buyer because of appreciation, we can do a strike price at $120,000. So I make $20,000 on the back end. So I'm making money in the beginning, middle and end. Usually the threads are a lot bigger, but that's just an example there. And it, it, I love it. You get paid for five years straight and it's all cash flow and it's amazing. And the tenant buyer usually pays for a lot of the problems on it too, because they're technically the owner per se on the rent to own. Um, and it, it's great. There's there's a lot less risk on it because you're signing a lease, not someone's mortgage over. And the property values are increasing that whole time. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, huge. Yeah. with everything happening in the last like year, things are going up like 20, 30% in some of the counties. I, I mean, like even in Miami, I think I saw Coral Gables, like some of those properties were already going up like 50%, 60% in value. It's like just crazy numbers that's happening right now. Right. So you know, tons of value right there, Zach. I know a lot of people are going to love watching that. We'll make sure we uh, have micro content on that as well. Zach, uh, before we wrap it up, I always have like rapid rapid fire questions. You could do a longer answer. You don't have to do rapid fire, but I always ask signature questions at the end of my show and I'm going to let it rip. So what is the most important tip to locking up your deal? What is that? Rapport. I would say rapport, hands down. Having that connection with that seller, that's how you get these those deals closed. Simple as that. Because my sellers, and especially in Port St. Lucie, they're dealing with five, like five other people went through the property. Why are they going to choose me? I'm offering them always going to be a lower price than the other investors. So why would they go with me? That's crazy. It's because I know their dog's name. I know their favorite sports team. We talked about two in the Miami Dolphins for an hour. We I see a fishing behind me. We talked about snook fishing on the river. We I have a genuine connection with them. I know their kids' names. I literally, I, I have so much connection rapport built with them that when it comes time to do it, they say, I got five other guys. Who should I go with? I really like Zach. I really connect with him. He seems like a genuine person. He never tried to just, to, to just go crazy, get the deal signed. Like, he was just generally out there to help me out. Um, and I spent a lot of time talking to people on the appointments or virtual uh, acquisitions people outside, especially outside the state of Florida, do that a lot. But rapport is everything, really. That's the difference between the seven-figure and the six-figure wholesaler is how much time you spend actually connecting with the seller. It's not about the property. Ever. It's sometimes about the property, but it's more about the person um, getting a good wholesaling deal than not. I like that as a hook point. What's the difference between a six figure and a seven figure? And that right there, is, it's all about the rapport and connecting. It with is. That Insistence, but uh, rapport. So. Right. So would you say that's the best way to build trust between you and the seller? Because like that would be my second question. Is, it, is rapport the same answer? Yes, but the problem is if Al, if you were really good at rapport and you just pop into Port St. Lucie, I'm not going to say this meanly, but I'll probably get more trust than you. The reason why is I can go tell my seller, I literally, I'll give them my LLC. They'll go to the uh, public records and see how many properties I've bought in all cash closed on in Port St. Lucie in that zip code. 
they'll see I bought like two or three a month. They'd be like, dang. And my name's on those deeds. And so they were like, Al, can you show me all the deeds you've bought in Port St. Lucie? Because I'll tell him to do that. And you're not going to pop up. And he's going to be like, who should I trust? Sorry, like it's an unfair advantage I have, but I'm going to do that. So that's how I build my trust in my sellers. Go look up deeds. on. See my personal name signed on deeds. I buy properties cash. And that's it. Like that's how I build the most trust. Um, just because I show the, that's why I do the YouTube channel. That's why I show HUDs. That's how I build trust over other wholesaler YouTubers. I show you the checks. I show you the real stuff. I totally agree with the use of the YouTube channel that way. But that's really interesting. I've never heard of anybody, uh, I guess not intentionally, but don't. leaving your name on the deed. And then obviously you made you do your LLC. Well, or why sign it? It's Zachary Ginn for, you know, one, two, three home buyers LLC. Gotcha. Okay. I was like, wait, you put your actual yeah. name on that. No. no. That but that's great. I mean, that you do that because it shows the trust and that you can make this deal happen. Like you will close the deal that's over it. something that's just offering something that's not going to happen. That's it. Zach, I get different answers on this all the time. It could be title companies. It could be underwriting. It could be appraisers. It could be lenders, mortgage people. It could be the market's just so hot. Uh, what do you find right now seems to be your biggest deal killer? Right now? Right now. I would say time. Time is the biggest deal killer of all. Um, you need to be super fast when wholesaling right now, and especially in this market. If you give it enough time, uh, time kill. Time will kill all deals. They'll have more options. They'll look around, and if they're not winning, let's sell now. They'll probably wait. Uh, for our sellers, I literally tell all of our sellers, you should go list this property with a realtor. Go do it. You'll make the most money. I always say that. And for the ones, they'll go list it with a realtor. It's perfect. It's not the right fit for me. If you just want to sell it cash and don't want to deal with the games of a realtor, go with me. Go and pay commissions, go with me. So if someone has a lot of time on their hands and they don't really need to sell a property for cash, that will probably kill your deal. So hey, go with someone else. Time, time's probably the biggest killer of all deals. Uh, too much time that goes by from your next follow-up, you're gonna that deal's gonna be dead. Following up as soon as possible, that's it. So if you're not building connections or spending time doing connections, that's another killer. Uh, that's what I would say right now. Time. I could see you as like hyper lead management for your team. Like, do, do you, are you like super on that with, with follow up and everything? No, no. Um, I would get them five to six hours a week for wholesaling. Um, we have our acquisitions person. I'm on their butt though every week. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, but I just look at the data. Like how, how many leads we have, how many times you followed up with each lead. Yeah. And, I'm sorry, but I don't care what I, I like. I don't care. You had lunch and you couldn't do it with Susie. What are the numbers? What do the facts say? Did you follow up or not? That's as simple as it should be. I'm a very analytical person when it comes to that. X or Y, like one, one or zero binary. Did you do it or not? That's it. I can see your follow up emails. Uh, any update yet? Are we there yet? Are we that's not? It. You know, that's now, it. Her, I'm like, I'm not like that. I'm like, how, how how's uh, how's your Chihuahua doing? You know, like we just have. I, I it, it, it's a switch when running in a legit business and managing it. It's all about the data, the numbers, the profit. When it comes to actually being a people person outside of wholesaling, I am not like that at all. Um, I'm very personal, uh, more emotional with things. It's all cold stone cold business when it comes to actually that management side. Uh, it, it's, it's really funny to see the difference between me on there, but that's what you have to have to have a successful business. It's about the numbers. It's not about the emotions with the business. I totally understand what you're talking about right now. I go through that in my business. It's it's about numbers. It's getting leads. It's making it happen. And time's against you. So you really got to get that lead and, and, sure. and get it and tackle it. Zach, thanks so much again for being on my show. Uh, so just who are you looking to connect with you and reach out to you? I'm talking about the mastermind and the course again. But where can people find you? I know we got your Chirons up. But where can people find you? And who do you want contacting you? So – Anyone who wants to learn wholesaling can get in contact with me. I'm very rare person. I think that, uh, again, you're not a specific wholesaling YouTuber, so I'm not like going after you, but uh, most big YouTubers, I, I used to DM them um, when I was starting on wholesaling and I always got re left on scene, which is a bit pet peeve with me. But um, if you want to message me on Facebook or Instagram, I'll literally message you back. I'll probably give you a voice message back. Like a uh, I, I will answer every single comment on YouTube, every single like Instagram DM. 
like message on Facebook. I'll answer all of them personally. So if you want just to talk to me, I'll talk to you. Like I, I, I love talking to people. So um, I'll do it. If you just want to learn how to make money in real estate, go follow my YouTube, go to my mastermind. I'm just here to give the info for free. If it's not right, just don't do it. But that's what I would say. If you just want to learn how to make money in wholesaling, flip with Rick on YouTube, Zach in on YouTube, wholesaling house is free on mastermind. I ain't going to sell you on there. There's no gimmicks, no funnel systems. I'm just trying to give you value and that's it. And that, that's what I'm trying to do. So make sure you check him out on the YouTube channel at uh, Flip with Rick. And then you got the Zach in channel, tons of videos. He's going live today at 5 p.m. I saw that on the Facebook yeah. page. So make sure you go friend him on Facebook, follow him on the channels. He's all over the place. He's the 21 year old superstar investor that's on YouTube. I mean, he's great with social media. So Zach, thank you so much again for being on here. Uh, maybe there, there will be a probate one day where we'll cross paths. So we'll, we'll see where that. Thanks again, Zach.